Thanks for staying with us. Now, the North Korean President Kim Jong-un has described Nigeria and Ghana as the backbone of Africa because, according to him, they have all the natural resources in abundance to make them the most important and sought-after countries in the world. But corruption is a major problem and a curse to them. Now, he further went on to ask us to give him just a year and he'll transform these countries into first-class countries that will attract businesses all over the world. He said, Nigeria should give in, Ghana should give in, and let us colonize them for the second time so they will eventually learn how to run a country. These two countries are on a mission of, of proving to the whites that blacks are only good at crime and having power of having long-lasting sex. Oh, my goodness. Now, he then concludes with sit up Africa, sit up Ghana, sit up Nigeria, and just sell the country, or just, or just sell the countries, uh, the countries to us. That's the, the source is from Al Jazeera. So tonight we want to pretend like that was not an insult and it did not hurt us, <laughs> and focus on the message that he posed, right? The message, the crux of the matter, which is, are we truly equipped to run this country? Or should we just outsource? It's a simple question. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So I want to start with uh, Sanzi's comment. Amadi Ohada, <laughs> we punished the guy. <laughs> you know, I mean, at, at first instance, when you read it, you say, what kind of rubbish? What kind of nonsense? So we should go back to a colony and all of that. Mm -hmm. But read through the message and read it well. You know, we have lived in this country over 60 years. Where is the result, you know? So what let have we achieved? What have we gained? And are we truly competent to handle this country? I want to come to Lamy first, then I'll come to you. Oh. Lamy, let me hear your thoughts on this. When you first heard it, what came to your mind? <laughs> well, no, it was laughable, but I thought that um, um, Ketu Kholi put black. Really? He's, he's not done well with his country. Okay, go ahead, go North ahead. North Korea is one of the poorest... Kua, North Korea is one of the poorest countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that they are bothered by South Korea, which is one of the first class countries in the world. What has he done with his country? <laughs> there is so much poverty. But the only takeaway I could take from the country is there is a high level of literacy. Mm -hmm. And the healthcare system is really, really advanced. Those are the two key things I could take away. But any other thing, it has no right whatsoever. But how did we find ourselves in a situation where a dictator from a third world country is planning or has thoughts of uh, colonizing another third world country? Means maybe we are even slight. We are even on a slide towards the first world. Maybe we are not even in the third world anymore. Mm -hmm. Let me answer did that. Did we lose Lamy? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Let me answer that. Where, how did we find ourselves in this position? We found ourselves in this position because our leaders have not stepped up. If they had stepped up and they had carried us along, they had, they had held everyone that had embezzled every little dime in Nigeria accountable. And at the end of the day, they, after holding them accountable, they haven't um, they, whatever monies they have, or projects, they or prosecute. projects that they have actually tried to execute, they have actually done it without giving us ele white elephants or telling us tall tales. That is how we have found ourselves in the position we are mm -hmm. in currently. Mm -hmm. And I talked about something about trust. Trust is a very key role in, it plays a huge role in Nigeria currently. Because when the leaders tell us something, the moment we process it, we say, this man is lying. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells us another thing or comes up with another story, we say it's another strategy. Look at what is happening with Nen. Nen has, we, everybody is saying, oh, Nigerian government always comes up with one thing after the other, <laughs> one thing after the other, just to keep us busy. Mm -hmm. Are they doing this on purpose to make life more difficult for us? Absolutely. So it, that there, is, there are so many ways or so many angles that you can look at it from, but holistically is the fact that our leaders have failed, not stepped up failed leadership. to the game. So, so, so when I... When I but my question... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that... But my the, question is... Mm. Go ahead. Can I go on? Go, go on, Lamy. So my question, why is this vicious cycle 
of selfish and incompetent leaders. Why yeah. is it perpetuating itself up to this moment? Absolutely. So this is um, this is the reaction I was going to say that a lot of people, when I put it up on my status, I got a lot of people re responding to me. Hmm. Someone says, sadly, this is Uju. She's in Canada. She says, sadly, this is what we need, right? Sadly, as sad as it sounds, you know, this is what we need. Then somebody now asked a question that, yes, we seem incapable of making the best out of our resources. I mean, if, that, if this is true, even, even though he is a dictator, people don't, at this point in Nigeria, people do not even mind us going to a dictatorship kind of leadership for us to be able to get results, mm -hmm. you know? So you are asking about the vicious circle. Maybe it's because we have, we have um, how do I put it? We have grown so, um, so docile as a people that anything goes. Right? No, I won't say docile. No, we have grown so docile. Anything goes. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have so accepted mediocrity for so many years that at this point now, anything that seems like a, a, a ray of sunlight, just, we just accept it like that. Because if not, why do we keep going out all the time, every four years, go and, go and press a thumbprint for this same crop of leaders? Why? We, in, look, the truth is this. If you... Our, our leaders, they go outside the country. They see what's obtainable outside the country. But when they come back, they want to still continue with the way, with the middle cow it way they used It is because we have accepted it. They because said that your is what they Lissi, gained Lissi, through. Listen, Isi, they said that you are, you, the, the kind of leadership you, you get as a country is the kind of leadership that you deserve. I mean, let me help, let me help look you at, Look at what happened with NSARS. After the NSARS protest, they actually tried to fish out everybody that participated in mm. NSARS protest. Look, if the government wants to fish you out, they'll fish you out. They know what to do. But the moment it is against them, they don't want to do it anymore. That's the, that's the problem we have in, in Nigeria. <laughs> no accountability because they do not want to face the music. Let me come to Lamy. Is Lamy, oh, is, is Lamy there? I think she's... So there's a glitch there. So mm -hmm. Uti sent a message in uh, when we were chatting about this topic. She okay. says, if you are between the rock and a hard place, you know, yes, I find it irritating, but we must acknowledge that his dictatorship is the answer. We are not set up for democracy in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The way we are structured, we're not set up. Our bumbling leadership mm -hmm. is filled with greedy, self-serving, right, illiterate. Mm -hmm. eh? So this is what Uti was saying in the group. This mm -hmm. is the... Co um, constant message when you hear it. And that's exactly Let me read what another comment from, from Benson. He says, mm -hmm. your topic for today is really interesting and provocative. Mm. This has a lot to do with leadership. Sadly, where we are at the moment, the actions requires combination of strong visionary drive slash implementation mm -hmm. and to a large extent, brute enforcement of the law, no matter whose ox is God. Mm -hmm. With these two actions, one year is possible to begin the realignment. So mm -hmm. we, we are going back to this question. Because for me, what I found interesting mm -hmm. in the comment that he made was that, are you trying to tell me that you can wipe away all these years of um, degradation, poor infrastructure, no development, all under one year, you based on the resources that we have in this country. I looked at it, and I looked at it, um, what's it called? Holistically. Holistically. Looking at the resources that we have in this country, mm. it is very possible. So mm -hmm. why are we not having those kinds of transformation? Why are we not seeing those kind of transformation? That's mm. the question I'm asking. But no, I think I... we have Lamy back. Lamy, are you back? <laughs> I saw her just now. Okay. Lamy. Okay, she's not there anymore. Okay. So we are not having, yeah. we are not having that kind of, um, how do I put it now? What was the last question? You just, uh, I, my thoughts just. Um, Let me read the second went, question went again. again. It says part of this issue slash problem for mm. the change that we crave are mm. mathematics interprets uh, as follows. Mm. The following, you know, some of these are our audience. They are very, <laughs> <laughs> the properties of a subset will always po uh, pose the general aggregates. Um, mm -hmm. properties of the whole set. Maybe to bypass the apparent limitations, what King Jong-un um, beco um, said becomes validated. Christians believe that this was a critical base for Christ's coming. Uncle Benson, mm. please resend this message and explain to <laughs> us what you mean by this. You uh, know, I think he was trying to say that the 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 Antichrist will come from the east or something. No, no, no. no. From the east or something. So Anita but says the truth is mm -hmm. that the truth is we are a country that have 
never pro progressed as we should. Mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it seems around the world that our failure is on us. So it's understood for him to make such a statement. Our fault is that we have failed our country. I will still take it back again. Um, we, they, that, that's a valid point at, by Anita. Mm. There is something that actually struck me when she talked or when she wrote, sent that message. In that message, what actually struck me was that we as Nigerians also have a huge role That's to what play. I said now. You were arguing with me. I said we, <laughs> the, we get the, de the leaders that we deserve. I think Lamy is back. Mm. We get the we, leaders that we deserve. We, we so we have, have been the one accepting the same leaders. We go every time, four years to... to and to, time, to, to, and time again. But also remember that, like just like what's happening currently in, um, what's it called, Uganda, where the, the president has decided to take the law into his hands, not a situation whereby, I think in Africa, what we do is this. We allow the institution to indemnify the man. We weaken our institutions. Exactly. Yes. But in America, the institution is bigger than the, man. than the man. If that was the case we had in Africa or Nigeria, I think we would not be in the boat we are sailing with right now. Right now, absolutely. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me hear you. We lost you for a minute there. Okay, uh, my, my thoughts. Uh, the last time I heard was um, if you're talking about institutions and all that, yeah. Mm. I think it's a strategy. The political elites perpetually do this. For if they have their reasons for doing this. It's just mm. um, to perpetually keep us in slavery. The kind of institutions we have in Africa, because if you look at it, this is not just a Nigerian problem. It's a problem that cuts across almost all the countries in Africa. So I think we need to sit down and look at it. Is it culture? Is it education? Is it the black race? What exactly is the problem? And I'll put it at the doorstep of colonialism. When the colonialists came, they practiced extractive institutions. Mm -hmm. They were taken away from the institutions. They were including in the institutions. If you look at first class countries, first world countries rather, you will see that they practice inclusive institutions. Yeah. They are always adding more. They add more to the education. They make sure they have a conducive environment for innovation, for technology to advance by educating the public. Mm. They, give you, they don't give them money, but they give them an environment, an enabling environment to ensure that they thrive, to make sure that they are successful. Mm. But here, number one problem we have in Nigeria mm. and in Africa is rule of law. There is no rule of law. No, but there are no consequences for anything. So if the first set of leaders that took over in 1960 did some things and they got away with it, the next set of leaders came and nothing happened and they perpetrated it. And this it will continue. We're all human beings. When there are no consequences for action, you will thrive in it. So this would continue. And I don't, I'm not sure that this can cease in our lifetime because it no, we're losing Lamy again. Okay. You know, but she's she's so making a very, val very valid, valid point. point. And this exactly. is what we keep saying that, you know, so um where do we where do we start from? Right? The question is can Nigeria become a first class country in a year? The answer is yes. It's possible. But where do we start from? It takes the willpower. And this is where I want to talk to young people, right? Mm. We're going into 2023. Everybody is saying, oh, they cannot wait for 2023 to come mm -hmm. and all of that. I don't want us to see 2023 as a solution to this long-standing problem of corruption. Because the corruption that we are having in this country is so, so deeply sunk. It's not something that, it, I mean, is just at the top. It is all, at all it's levels. across the K there. I mean, so... You, you go to a small company, mm -hmm. somebody is trying to, you know, cut corners and all of that. So it has, it has really eaten deep. So I'm wondering now, are we ready to take the bull by the horn and say, you know what, I am ready to sacrifice my own convenience, my own happiness and everything for, for us to move for the greater good of the country. Nobody is thinking of the greater good of the country right now. Everybody is thinking what it what is beneficial to my pocket. Exactly. So if I'm doing something, I'm thinking, okay, what is the bigger picture for Nigeria? What's the bigger picture for my company? What's the bigger mm. picture for this? But how many people right now mm. can beat their chest to say, you know what? I'm thinking big picture. I'm not thinking what will enrich my pocket. My pocket. pocket. We're going to take a Nobody. break. Nobody.
Yeah, we're going to take a break. Yes. When we return from the break, we'll open the phone lines and we'll hear what you're also saying from your end. Stay with us. We'll be right back.